This is kind of part unboxing, part sketchbook video, so stay tuned and I'll try not to wait, waste too much of our time. Um, first off, we're going to start with this bad boy. Um, also, everything that I bought, I bought with my own fat stacks, so I'm not sponsored. This is my favorite knife, by the way. It's by Buck. So, what are we opening today? If you follow me on Instagram, you might be able to guess. But, um, if not, this is what we're opening. <laughs> so, I'm really, really excited for this. Really, really excited. I waited a very long time for it to come in. I actually ordered this on the 24th of February. And it is March 9th. So. Bought this on sale. injured my back yesterday. <laughs> I don't actually know how. So lifting this is a little rough for me. Wow, this bag is massive. Holy cow. So these are the Honolulu series markers, just meaning that they have a brush on one end and a chisel on the other. Oh, this is insane. I always wanted a big set of markers and I could never afford one. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of markers. It's like, I watched a ton of videos to prepare, but it's still, wow. So you get this to help with any bleed through. So I'm stoked about that. I usually just use like parchment and stuff. Little booklet with all of the colors and the different markers and everything that you can get. Then you get all of these swatch cards. a super big fan of swatching but I will so here's this guy 320 markers these are insane I'm spying a very atomic orange holy cow and a red you can't even see how red that is so there's the brush Oh, these are nice, nice girthy markers and the chisel. I know everyone's kind of divided on it, but I love, I love the chisel. Okay, so we're gonna close this guy up. I'm really into this case. I like it a lot. So we're going to move this distinguished gentleman We'll move him. And then, so I also bought this guy, but I bought him off of Amazon. Thankfully, he came in very early. So I just got the 36 skin tone. I was actually told it didn't have a lot of duplicates, but that was kind of baloney. But that's okay. Um, I got this one in the Oahu series. So it has basically, essentially, all of the same stuff as the other one with the swatching and the sheet, which is very cool because I can never have too many of those. I've got three billion sketchbooks. So let me reach back here. Essentially, again, all the same stuff. Magic bananas. And these are the markers. Look how pretty they are. 
Uh, I'm kind of not too mad that I have duplicates because I could actually take this home with me and I don't have to worry about it taking up a whole bunch of space. So, oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So let's get a shot of these guys side by side. Where'd my zipper go? So, there we go. Let's see, 36. So with the Oahu series, it just means that you have a bullet nib on one side, which I find perfectly serviceable, and a chisel on the other. Um, with the Honolulu, um, I know for a fact that you can get a brush on one end and um, a bullet nib, so if you're not a huge fan of chisel, that could be the right option for you. Can we even get the other one over here? Wow, holy cow. <laughs> the size difference. All right. I'm uh, just a huge fan of this bag. It's got a shoulder strap and everything. This is fantastic. Okay. Let's move these guys out of our way. I also have a cool gray one, three, five, and then a black. I have two of these in Chow. They were the original ones, and this one I got for blending. So, yep, all of those are Copics. And then back here, these are my Blick Studio brush markers. They're the warm gray equivalent of these. So, there's that. This is before Letraset got bought by Winsor & Newton. So I have these from way back in the day. They were some of my first colored markers, and I love them a lot. They've got bullet nibs and uh, the chisel. Um, I enjoy them. I really enjoy them. They were the cheapest option at the time, and it's just really sad that they're going to be gone, and I'm not going to be able to use them anymore, especially with the price change. Yeah, this is a 24 set here. So it has a small assortment of colors, and I really like them, so um, I'll be glad to use those. And this is just a Curacolor Zig Cartoonist brush. It's got a fine tip. I only have a red one of these. I got it in a sketch box like a billion years ago. And then a brush tip. So this one's fantastic. It's small, but it's lasted me a long time. So I do recommend that. So let's move on. So I'm going to go ahead and organize these off of camera. I think it would be really annoying to watch and I'll probably do the swatching then as well. I probably won't film that. It's gonna take a while. So, oh, here we go. So here are the markers in all of their glory. This is taken with my iPad so they all look way nicer than on my camera, like they're not washed out. That atomic orange I was talking about. This is what the box looked like. Thought it was pretty nice. Yeah, super, super big size difference. They take a different amount of ink too. So yeah, this was like six hours in when I finished and I actually organized them all. It took forever. This was a little bit of practice. That was on cardstock. I think it turned out way nicer than when I drew in my Illo. So let's start sketching. Um, this was a lot later. I've had these markers, like I said, since the 9th. And a bunch of stuff was going on, so I couldn't even make my video. I was super hyped to do it, too. I really, really wanted to make this video. I'm like, I'm gonna make the best thing, the greatest thing. And then I don't feel like I did. I Everyone said it was fine. And maybe they're right, but I ran into some issues with it that kind of ruined it for me. So, it's okay, maybe I'll feel better about it later. I think I just hyped up the video way too much. So, yeah, I just started out doing a thumbnail because I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to draw. I had some ideas before. I even thought about just doing some more portraits. Um, kind of almost wish I had done that, but it's too late now. So I just decided to make this this guy. I wanted to make something a little bit more graphic. And I had this idea of, I don't know, like a fish head or something. 
I have this board on my Pinterest that I kind of add things to that's just stuff that inspires me. And I know, or at least I believe, that I have something in there that has this kind of anime style pencil drawing of someone's character with a wolf head that has some spiral eyes or something, and I really, really like that. And that was just in my head at the time, so I thought, man, I want to make something graphic. I want it to look this specific way with these weird, like, goggly eyes, and then... Yeah. And by goggly, I just mean they stick out in different directions, kind of like goggles do when you stick them on the top of your head, and then they're really rounded. So, like, googly eyes, but... Yeah. Place like goggles. Okay, I started just doing my sketch on here. This paper is kind of a pain in the butt because uh, you can't erase very much. And I have a pretty light hand, but it'll just leave the lines in the paper even when I use my good eraser, that Sumo Grip one. So that's kind of annoying. You kind of want to know what you're going to draw, and that's why I ended up thumbnailing. When I did some of the ones on the other page, um, I didn't I didn't do that. I did not thumbnail. I just went into it. So they have some straying lines that I could not get rid of, but that was fine. But for this video, I kind of wanted to plan a little bit more. So what did I think of the markers? When I first started using them, I thought these things are freaking juicy and they are juicy and they are really, they are actually really nice. You know, I watched a bunch of reviews, watched a bunch of videos for, you know, years of people just getting these markers and testing them out. And then I tested them for myself and realized that they were right. These are really good markers. And I couldn't believe it. I don't know why I couldn't believe it, but I couldn't believe it. They're really, really good. They're juicy. They actually blend probably better than almost any other marker that I have tried. And they don't overblend. Like, they don't spread out so much that you can't keep it in the lines. Like, most of the time that it gets messy, it's just me being a little wild. I really like the brush tip on them. I did get the ones, like I said, that have the bullet nibs as well. And I've used bullet nibs before, and these ones are also just really nice even as bullet nibs go. So yeah, I think the brush is good. It's not too mushy, which I feel like sometimes the Copigans kind of are for me. And it's also not too stiff. So I, I don't know, I just found it really nice. <laughs> I just really like them. And even someone like me who picks something up and I'm like, oh, it's really nice, I don't want to use it, or I, I don't want to use this up, or whatever, I keep getting them out and I keep using them, so I know that I really, really like them. So yeah, I, I can say that I recommend them. I do hope that they continue coming out with more refills because I will probably need some eventually. And I've also, I, I was worried, I was a little concerned that maybe I didn't need all of these colors. I thought I was going a little crazy, a little over the top with it, never tried anything from them before, and then I just bought 320 markers. But then I was using them and I have used a bunch of different colors and it's been really nice to actually have the option. Oh, right here in the in the picture. So I used this um, high tech C. I think it's a Coletta or something. It it didn't go well. I don't usually have problems with this pen. I don't have problems with it bleeding on cardstock, which is already pretty smooth. It bled. It bled and it was also skipping. I don't have problems with these pens skipping pretty much ever. And I kept having to draw off the side on that notepad just to get it to, to go again. And yeah, it wasn't a good choice. It wasn't a good choice. And if I had done a test with the pen beforehand, I would not have used it. So yeah, lesson learned. If I'm going to use this pen, use it after putting the markers down. Or just don't. Just use it on the cardstock. So, yeah, that was sad. Because it it's a pen that I always go to uh, for markers because it doesn't bleed. It doesn't smudge. dries pretty quickly. I don't run my hand through it too much. But it did on this paper. 
So from now on, it's going to be um, either going over the top of it with a ballpoint pen or a colored pencil or whatever, but yeah. Definitely after our having already done the marker. So you can see the thing I wanted to do was da -da -da, a fish head. Not even like a regular fish head, like some weird lake monster that maybe you would have seen in an early 90s cartoon. Like a camp episode. Yeah, that's what I went with. Which my brother thought was really cool and also gross. So I feel like I kind of won that one. <laughs> <laughs> by giving the fish gums for some reason. So yeah, I do really enjoy these markers. I think they're great. I do, I really like that it did feel like I'm getting a barrel full of, of ink. They're not half filled or whatever. I like that the nibs are reversible, so if your brush starts fraying or whatever, you can just flip it around and use it for longer without having to buy another one. I think that is a super win. Um, I really like the bleed sheets. They go into pretty much every sketchbook I have and work well. I think in some cases they're kind of a little bit small, but I'm sure they're working off of an average size, so that's okay. And I do still have a parchment paper, and that's what I end up using in this drawing. But I will say, if you are going to do the swatching thing and the reorganizing thing, which I recommend, it helps a lot, it's an undertaking. It is an undertaking. Uh, maybe have somebody help you or don't do it all in one day. Don't do it all in one day like I did. I was having horrible back pain at the time anyway. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it was, I kind of downplayed a little bit, but it was terrible. I could barely move. And I definitely felt much worse after organizing all of these in one sitting. So yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely do use the swatch sheets. You need them. The colors are not accurate. The names are not always kind of what you expect, which is totally fine. And the swatch sheets help. There was a couple of the colors that kind of splodied and went all over. And even though they got on the swatch cards, I didn't mind because then I knew that that was a color I needed to kind of look out for when I opened it and was going to use it. So it didn't throw up all over my paper. So there's that. This picture took me a very long time, much longer than usual. And I don't know if it's because I drew him huge. I'm pretty sure the illo I have is 10 by 10? I think? Is it 8 by 8 or 10 by 10? Anyway, it's decently large and he filled up the entirety of the page and I definitely wish I would have noticed that at the time and maybe just shrunk him down. So yeah, it uh, took me quite some time, especially with the pen skipping and stuff. And uh, maybe I should have just kind of brought one of my other markers in, but who knows, because it might have smudged worse if I had done that, so I shouldn't even say anything till I've done some more testing. Because I think this book will probably only be for marker because, well, maybe some inks sometimes, but it does smudge more and I can't use like any other media on it. So, yeah, probably just end up being the marker book. And I'll still use cardstock because it's my favorite. It will always be my favorite, I think. I've never found anything that works as well. And maybe one day I'll try... Maybe one day I'll try like a render sketchbook or I'll try one of the Ohuhu sketchbooks. I'd like to try their mixed media pad or something. I noticed that they have this really good point system, which I was not expecting. So maybe I'll take advantage of that. So that would be cool. And then I could test it and I wouldn't have to pay a jillion dollars. I kind of like how this one boot turned out. I mean, they're both the same boot, but I like the orthographic view because you can actually see more of the details that I was kind of thinking about putting in. 
I even kind of like his vest a little bit. I like doing that really chunky um, zip track kind of thing. Even though I didn't put a giant zipper on it, and that's also one of my favorite things. And originally, when I was drawing him, I was going to make him this like really huge machine gun or something for him to hold, like a game character. And I did not do that. I realized that I was not going to have time for that. In fact, I had a bunch of paper and different sketchbooks that I wanted to try with him that I hadn't before, just specifically for the video, and also to know what paper I could use the markers on, because <laughs> that would be helpful. And once I got into this, I realized that I was not going to have that kind of time, and I don't know why I believed magically in my mind that uh, that time was going to fall into my lap when I was doing a whole picture with markers, and it's not on my tiny sketchbook paper. So yeah, I will definitely try to do more marker videos. I really, I really like using these a lot. You can see right here, I got everything set up. I had all of my swatch cards. They barely fit. <laughs> they barely fit on my desk with the bag. So I had the bag to my left. Yeah, I kind of had a hard time showing the markers. I was trying to show the colors that I used. Later on when I'm not showing them, I'm using the same ones, the exact same colors. I just left them out. I had some sitting on my lap and to my right and over the top of the sketchbook and it was kind of a mess. <laughs> So yeah, I had actually written on the side some of the colors that I was thinking about as I was drawing. I just kept that notepad there and I would draw next to the little thumbnail and I would just mention colors that I was kind of looking for that I thought would look nice together. And the one thing that I couldn't really decide on was what I was going to make the best. If it, uh, originally, I was going to make it look like the shorts. But I thought the colors were going to clash a little too much, being that they were both different kinds of green. So I didn't do that, and I don't necessarily regret that decision, but I think maybe I could have gotten away with making the best brown. And I kept fighting myself on that, but I do wish I'd gone with just a nice brown. It would have kind of contrasted nicely with all of the blues. And then... You can't see it very well, but my pen is smudging. And, ooh, get ready. Ugh, it's super smudged. I kept having to clean off the ends of my markers, especially the yellow ones. It was super bad. And so it kind of changed how I ended up coloring the rest of this. I probably would have put some orange in the eyes. And um, done kind of the little rim lights and things that I like to do and some of the bounce light and everything and I I couldn't make it work and by the end I was just like okay let's just try to get through this without too many incidents <laughs> and maybe that's why I feel a little negatively about it but it's all right I started figuring out kind of where I could show the marker and you could actually see it shadow pink I really like this one actually it works pretty well it's good for, like, blush on really light skin tones. But you can see they blend really, really well. I like them a lot, but not too much. It's not, they don't bleed into each other so much that you can't even see the edges. That was also um, some trouble that I had with a few of my markers before, where they would just really, really bleed into each other and I definitely had to go in with color pencil and I feel like with these there are definitely some things that you can do where you can get away with not having to use the color pencil to pull contrast but I do still like to use the color pencil because I like the texture quite a bit then you're not fussing as much with the markers you're not using all of the ink to get it to look exactly the way that you want that's just my preference. I really like this weird color. Like, um, 
what do they call it, like an army green or something. I have a character um, in one of my super, super old comics, and she had a jacket like this. And it was kind of short, but it was exactly this color and kind of had that canvasy jean look to it. And so every single time I get the chance to use it, I do backpacks and vests and shorts and pants and whatever. Yeah, for this I just use some warm gray. I have three. I have a 90, a 70, and a 50. And I think that's what I used on this entire vest. All of those warm grays. And yeah, I don't know. I still think maybe it would have looked better with a brown. Yeah, I'm just cleaning this up. It looks so nice. I do go in and, and put some more of the dark in there. Because obviously with it, with it blending, it does kind of knock out some of it. Because I go back through the dark parts so that they do blend all the way up into the lighter areas. That's what the stamp ladies taught me. And they knew how to color. So yeah, just working on that zipper track. Ooh, it was smudging and I was trying so hard to stay away from <laughs> the lines because it was, it kept stopping me and I had to clean off the marker again and again and again. Luckily with some of the darker colors, you can't see it as much, but with the lighter ones, it's just a nightmare. That's the pen's fault. Or maybe not even the pen's fault, that's kind of the paper's fault. <laughs> but 100% my fault, because I didn't test it beforehand. I just decided with these boots I was kind of going to do the color combo that I ended up doing for the fish head. Just to balance out the colors and how they sat. And I actually really enjoyed this. For some reason I've always really liked making boots. Oh, I really like the way that the tread looks, especially when you make it really chonky and it sticks out and creates its own shape. It's very interesting. And then I like making those weird edges and uh, like little thread spots and things along the entirety of the boot. Finally doing the skin. This one was definitely a struggle because it kept smudging. And then because I was doing a warmer skin tone, it was just adding the cool line art into it and it was really messing with it. And I was glad that I hadn't done as much hatching as I usually do. Yeah, these always blend better on cardstock. Every single alcohol marker I've ever used has blended way better on cardstock. So I do recommend that. I don't even buy super expensive cardstock. But yeah. I recently got a little sketchbook and I'm hoping I can use some marker and paint and stuff in it so that I can just go through with more mixed media because I uh, don't like designating sketchbooks to only one thing because then I won't use them. So yeah, this skin is just a lot of blending. Definitely whenever I put the lightest tone in it's kind of a little bit more pink so the colors that i chose for the skin were basically what i used on that other paper that i showed you at the beginning with the cardstock portraits 
and I have like it's more of a brown and then a little bit of an orange kind of as my mid-tone and then whenever I do the lighter tone it's pinker so that it keeps the skin from like kind of losing that I guess liveliness to it and then I have a pink that I use obviously I put it over there on the knee and stuff and I think that that works out pretty nicely gave him bright red hair which is my favorite I really like doing that I I like a lot of like red-haired characters in anime and comics and stuff like that they're always a little wily so These are just Prismacolor colored pencils. I've had them for a long time. I have a little set that got bought for me for Christmas, like years ago. And I like to use them with marker and watercolor. One day I should just practice just doing a regular colored pencil drawing because it's been a long time. <laughs> Man, these are just really nice. They felt really nice. They're so nice to, I guess, paint with. I like them. I really like them. I don't regret buying them. Which is nice. I don't have that buyer's guilt as bad <laughs> now that I've actually used them. And I'm like, I will use them. I love them. So, yeah. We'll do some more marker videos. Hopefully I will have learned some lessons. And my SD card died, so there's the sketch, the ink, and the finished thing. Tell me what you think. I hope that you liked it. Have a good day or night, and bye!